Hello everyone, as 2023 is winding to a close, I wanted to share with you another small video and in this video we're going to be speaking a little bit about metaphors, okay? Capoeira is a very rich art when it comes to metaphors and we use the metaphors all the time, sometimes we even forget that we're using a metaphor. In many ways the art itself is a metaphor for life. Um, but inside the Kapora universe, the Kapora language, the Kapora culture, we have many, many metaphors. You know, some masters speak about the chess game. Some masters speak about the conversation. The metaphor is having a conversation. Some people use a lot the freedom metaphor of breaking free from something. And anyways, if you sit with the old masters, uh, particularly in Brazil, the whole Brazilian language is full of metaphors and ways of analyzing something by using a different example. Okay, so I just want to read for you something a little bit about metaphors from outside of Capoeira. So metaphors are not just figures of speech. They are powerful tools that shape our perception. They influence our actions and ultimately, ultimately guide the way we live our lives. By envisioning life as an adventure, a race, a battle, a business, or a romance, we adopt different lenses through which we view ourselves, others, and the challenges we face. So I think that pretty much says it all. This is from a blog by a friend of mine, a Louise from the International Happiness a Association Happiness Fest. So. The metaphor is just a tool, right? And of course, no metaphor is perfect and every metaphor can only take you so far, you know, and you need to be aware of that. So we were talking about the context, right? So a spoon is just a tool. It's an amazing tool if you want to have some soup. It's not such a great tool if you want to cut a steak, but as long as you are aware of what the spoon is good for, you're all good, okay? So when we speak with a metaphor, there is always the guy in the room that says, ah, yeah, but it's not like that. Of course, okay, nothing is perfect. It's just like when I say a spoon is really good for soup and then somebody's going to scream, yeah, but it's not good for eating a steak. Obviously, okay? So everybody, use the metaphor to your best abilities. So what really counts when you're using a metaphor is if you have an optimistic view or a pessimistic view. Okay, just like I said, one guy sees the spoon, the pessimistic view would, would be, but it's not good for cutting a steak. Okay, obviously you can see what's wrong with the metaphor, or you can say, ah, this is an amazing tool for this. So a little bit about the optimistic view. Seeing life as an adventure creates a sense of excitement and openness for new experiences. You view others as fellow explorers and yourself as a brave adventurer. Challenges are opportunities for growth, and problems are puzzles to be solved, right? So the strength is that the metaphor fosters resilience and adaptability. The weakness is that it may lead to underestimating risks and long and lack of long-term planning. For example, in this in this uh, metaphor of life is an adventure. So if I think life is an adventure and I have an optimistic view, then I see everything as a lesson. I see everything as a new experience. But if I have a pessimistic view from a pessimistic standpoint, life's unpredictability is daunting. Others may be seen as competitors, obstacles, and oneself as unprepared or vulnerable. Okay? So if I have a pessimistic view and I think that life is an adventure, then suddenly everything is scary, everything is hard, other people are out to get me. Right? Now, this also has a strength because maybe it will give me a little bit of caution when I'm making decisions right? But the weakness here is when I have a pessimistic view, I have a lot of missed opportunities due to fear and hesitance, okay? So the metaphor I want to play with today is the metaphor of building buildings and building communities. And we're going to play around with that. And the reason why I'm choosing that metaphor is that my father, he's 75 this, this week, and I love him very much. And my father build buildings he started off when he was young uh building houses and then the company started building neighborhoods a few houses 
and then they went into small buildings, four or five stories, and then they went into neighborhoods of small buildings. And now they are in skyscraper mode, building these 70 floor and story buildings, okay? It's not my dad's company. He's working for a company his whole life since he's 21, and now he's 75, okay? So you can imagine his journey. And on the surface, if you don't understand metaphors, my dad builds buildings and I build communities. And uh, on the surface, there is nothing in relationship, right? Totally different thing. But if you go into the metaphor world, then we can have beautiful conversations because there is also many things that are connected in our journeys. So for example, something interesting about building a building, I don't know how many of you are connected to this area, so I'll just give a little bit of context. So when you're gonna build a very, very tall building, in the first few years, you go exactly in the opposite direction, you dig. And this is counterintuitive, yeah? I wanna go up, but now I have to go down, okay? Because obviously the higher the building, the stronger the foundations, need to be. So today it takes about five years to build these build buildings, especially, you know, maybe some countries do it faster. But if you go to YouTube, there is many, many these uh, time-lapse videos of a building that's being built over five years. They do everything in fast motion, right? So if you look at it, so if you have five years, it goes into five minutes. Every year becomes a minute. So if you look of a, of a building being built for five minutes, the first three minutes, nothing happens. Nothing happens in the video, but of course, a lot of stuff happens in reality. They're digging, they're digging, they're digging, they're putting sand, they're putting concrete, they're putting foundations. That is actually the most important part of building the building. And it takes three years. It's more than half the time. And then in two years, whoop, everything goes up, right? So in many ways, when we build a community, especially when we're doing it consciously, because communities sometimes they just happen also spontaneously, right? We'll talk about that in a different video. Sometimes a community happens spontaneously and then you have to start digging and putting a foundation if you want this community to grow. But let's say you're building a community from zero, or let's say you decide to restart your community on January 1st, 2024 which is, by the way, something that when you're building a building, you cannot do, right? When you're building a building, everything has to be planned before. But when we're building communities, we have a little bit more flexibility because we're not working with cement, we're working with people. So if you want to build a very big community, you have to dig your foundations, okay? And you have to understand what the foundations are of building a community, okay? Um, and it looks in the beginning, when you're building a community, it looks that nothing is happening. And the people around you, your loved ones, your friends, they look at you and all they see is a hole. Just like when you look at my father for the first three years, they're just digging a hole, right? And if you don't know what's going on, they're like, what? There's not gonna be a building here. They're going in the wrong direction. So when you're building the foundations, it's mostly about you. Yeah, the leader is the foundation of the community and the more this leader is stable in his uh, abilities to lead the more he has roots the deeper the roots go the bigger the potential is for that community to grow uh, over time so what would be the equivalent of cement and sand and foundations from the building in the community uh, well, in the Kapura world, of course, it has to do with your physical abilities and also your knowledge of the physical aspects of the art, the musical foundations, the methodological foundations, the historical foundations. So each one of these is a pillar of cement that if you have it uh, later on as the community grows, it will support them, right? And of course, there's many, many other pillars but in actually the only thing that you can really do for your community is to make sure that you are strong that you are grounded and that you are rooted in your knowledge 
so that people can use you yeah and the people are actually the building right so the people use your stability and your knowledge and your experience uh to hang on to you and then slowly build right another thing beautiful about this analogy of the building a building and building a community is related to the teamwork so if you go on a construction site uh it's a beautiful symphony especially if you go to the big big contracts construction sites i have one right in front of my window here so as i'm building my roots and my foundations here in miami there is somebody here that's building a building right in front of my window we are in a small competition okay and if you look at what's happening here it's a beautifully orchestrated symphony of different kinds of workers with different types of skill levels with different types of specialities and they're all working together and everything has to happen in a certain order there is a logical order for things you cannot do the cement before you did this and you cannot do this before you did that and you cannot put the air conditioning before there is windows and you cannot put the windows before there is this right so everything is orchestrated and if it's a good a uh, if somebody very very good is in charge of it it, it happens very very quickly okay and each one looks a little bit different and each, each one works a little bit different but when they come together the result is amazing right uh but even the guy that brings them the food at 12 p.m they have the lunch break right and a car comes in and gives them the food so imagine if that guy doesn't come one day what is going to happen to this team here that's working in perfect harmony yeah how are they going to work on an empty stomach yeah or without water or without the safety hat right so even the small details are important in a symphony and it's how we work together and how the community builder or the building builder knows how to harmonize this that really makes uh, the difference right so when it comes to human communities of course we work with all ages and with all levels and with all abilities that's a real community okay and every person is important you know especially if even the janitor right so you have an amazing community but even the janitor is important right because this community wants to be in a clean place and there needs to be toilet paper in the bathroom and it comes down to the fact that nobody is more you know maybe some people have more abilities than others maybe some people have more responsibilities than others maybe some people have more skills than others but in the end everybody is important for the symphony to be complete right and we they just like my dad makes sure that everything happens you know and it's thousands of people working on a building like this you can imagine right and it's engineers and it's a site a operators and it's a safety and it's a architects and there's different different levels okay but if you want this whole symphony to happen you need to know how to orchestrate it okay uh it might seem that the architect is more important than the welder and it, it's not about importance maybe it's about skill yes the architect is the one that maybe planned everything and designed everything and had the vision okay but in the end if the welder doesn't know how to weld 90 degrees this building is not going anywhere right so the welder is important and the architect is important of course are they equally important that depends on which level you're looking on the human level everybody is equal right and everybody matters and everybody is equal but on the professional level if we're talking now on the context of building a building obviously different skill levels have different levels of importance and the different levels of compensation okay but they are all important they are all important um taking this now to the capoeira world taking the building metaphor to the capoeira world so when you're building a community everybody is important okay every student is important every helper assistant is important every young instructor is important every more advanced instructor is important every professor every contramestre every master 
every gym owner, every marketer, every parent, every community uh, liaison, yeah, if it's a school principal in your neighborhood, where all of these people are part of your orchestra and you need to orchestrate them correctly, okay? Um, what else can we say about this metaphor of building buildings and building communities? Today I have like amazing, amazing conversations with my dad because he shares his experience and I understand totally what he's talking about because I can immediately take this into my world, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the differences. Obviously, we're working with people, which is the most challenging. Um, how do you say? I don't want to say that people are ingredients, yeah, but it's the most challenging uh, source to work with, yeah. So it's some artists they work with wood. Wood has different uh, has a kind of way to react. Some artists work with stone. Some artists work with glass. Some painters paint with oil. Some people we work with people. And people are very, very, very challenging and unique and dynamic. And it adds an extra layer to the project. Okay. And everything takes maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. And maybe everything is a little bit less predictable. But also some surprises can happen. Yeah. Because when you build a building, you know everything ahead of plan. A time. You plan the building 1000% to the last screw. They have these crazy plans. I remember as a child, it used to be printed plans. Our whole house was this, you know, a, a building on paper. It looks like this stack of papers and you pass it and there is the plumbing plan and the electricity plan and everything is planned to the last minute. When you work with people, it's a little bit more flexible. But of course, you have to plan just as well. Yeah, You have to plan. You have to have the vision 1000% clear in your mind. And now you need to try to bring this vision into reality, okay? When you're working with a building, the vision you had and the reality, they have to be very, very close, yeah? If you are planning a 30-story building, when you build, you know you're gonna have a 30-story building. There's no option that it's gonna be 29 stories or 35 stories. What you plan is what you build, and as you get better at building, the result is gonna come almost as close as possible to what you were planning, but it's amazing that, you know, humans have been building since the time of the Bible and even before probably. And still, even though they we're so good at planning and building, there is always some kind of conflict between theory and reality. OK, so even in these big projects, I've seen my father, they start to build something, then something happens that they didn't know about. They have to take it down. They have to you know adjust suddenly when you go deep you you find water you didn't know there's water anyways but in the end uh the result is let's say between 90 percent to 100 percent what it was planned but it will never be more it will be a little bit less maybe but it will never be more the success of a building is measured how close it came to what you were planning right in communities, there is these things that sometimes you can be surprised for the better, right? So it could actually be that you're aiming to build a, I don't know, a certain kind of community, but in reality, you're going to get something a lot better than what you imagined. Because when you join people together, there is an ability to upgrade the vision if you let it happen as a community builder. So once you put the foundations, once you put in the cement and the metal and everything, and you empower the people, because as community builders, we don't have blocks, we don't have cement, we have people. When we empower the people, they make the next, when we empower people, they make the next floor, the next one. So what can really happen in reality, and it's happened to me a few times, is that if you put a really good foundation, and you are a little bit uh, open to surprises and let things flow, many times you can get a, a result that is better than your vision, right? So that is, that is a great surprise. And that is something that, for example, my father cannot happen. He cannot plan a 30-story building and suddenly get a 40-story building. 
But for example, when I was building in Russia, I had one kind of vision and then reality happens and you adapt and you grow and you put, I already came actually to a building that was existing and I had to dig and put some more foundations so that building can rise. And now there's something that usually in reality you cannot do with buildings. Usually in buildings, once you put the foundation, that's it. But with people, even if you have something, now you can add foundation, suddenly they can grow. And then, you know, like the, the community in Russia, they surprised me a lot, you know. They, they, we got a result that at least in the beginning I could not even envision. It was a lot better, yeah. We were aiming for a 10-story house and we got a 30-story house, you know. And uh, that's one of the beautiful things about working with people, okay. So I just wanted to leave this message of uh, positivity towards the new year. If you're going now into this holiday season, I wish you... First of all, to relax a little bit and to recharge uh, from this uh, challenging year. And also, this is a time a little bit to sit down and to go in and try to envision what kind of buildings you want to build in next year, what kind of foundations you have, what are your strengths, what kind of fun foundations you might need to bring in from outside. And as you build your community, and your community can be your family, or your community can be your school, or your community can be your business, or whatever you decide to do. I hope that this video helps you or at least inspires you a little bit.